Ah, oh, I love looking at falling leaves every single morning. About to go for a run around London. Before I do, a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video. It's something I take every single day, let it grinks. This is my routine pretty much every single morning. Wake up, get ready to work out. Got my travel bottle, scoop of AG1, put it inside. Eight to 12 ounces of water goes in. Shake it up and drink. I've been doing this every morning for several months now. I have more energy, my gut feels better, which is important because I don't eat the healthiest of things often at all. I don't. And whenever I travel, I used to lug around over half a dozen bottles of vitamins and minerals, taking up so much space in my suitcase, I would often lose track of how many from each bottle that I took. It was just a big mess. But with Athletic Greens, it's so easy. With one scoop or one travel pack, I get 75 vitamins and minerals, probiotics, whole food sourced superfoods. For me, it's just a super convenient way to stay healthy. Also, AG1 always follows the latest research. They go beyond third party testing to make sure that whatever they're giving you, you're getting the highest quality and the best nutritional daily habits on the planet. And like I said, so easy with every box, you get travel packs, a travel mug, a free one year supply of vitamin D. This is so important. And people like me who don't really like the sun, basically most Asians, gotta take our vitamin D. Like I said, I've been doing this for several months now. My parents tried it, they're now on this. I got my friends to try it, especially in this day and age when we're all trying to stay as healthy as we can. At least for me, this is fantastic. So if you wanna give this a try, go to my link down below. Like I said, you get a year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your order. AG1 really does provide your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. Again, a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your order. All right, I'm gonna go for my run and uh, enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen here in Chicago. Hopefully everyone's doing well wherever you are. Starting the food day today in the afternoon, right now going to a Mexican seafood place. And then one of my favorite sandwiches, I think might be the best sandwich in the world I had in Florence. I found out they have a place that sells that here in Chicago as well. Anyway, tons of great food on the way. Let's get started. The restaurant we're in right now, Allegria, is famous for seafood, especially famous for a giant tray of seafood, which I don't think our table will be able to fit. We might need to bring a couple tables together. It's called Chirola Nayarit. Nayarit is a region in western Mexico along the Pacific Ocean, and Chirola is a tray. So it's basically a ginormous tray of seafood. But before that, fish ceviche for free. So we're gonna give it to you, fish ceviche. With diced onions marinated inside, that is super spicy. A new place, a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt Get me up, so in, somewhere I can find myself Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to the sky Trays coming out. This is gonna be scary in the best way possible. That's a lot of food. 
This is definitely the biggest super track I've ever seen in my life. This is it. This is something I can't even carry. I say with the tray, 100% over 50 pounds of food right here. This is supposed to feed 15 people. Luckily, we got a lot of family here in Chicago, so we'll be able to get some help with this. But let me just show you what's on here because it's, it's again, quite intimidating, a lot of stuff. First of all, fried shrimp, fried octopus, and they're both sitting in this red sauce. It's a secret sauce they use here. I don't know what it is. Guacamole butter bread, not one, not two, three entire fried fish, two snappers, one tilapia, giant fried shrimp, also fried shrimp wrapped with bacon, a grilled pineapple topped with cheese, clusters of Dungeness crab, of lobster octopus, shrimp scallops, everything stuffed on top of a giant lobster tail. Let's try this. I'm gonna start with the cheesy pineapple because that's gonna be the one that gets cold fastest. Look at this cheesy stuffed pineapple and this thing is stuffed full of seafood octopus lobster and scallops as well mozzarella cheese on top and then this went under the broiler to make the cheese nice and stretchy or well, it was nice and stretchy it's still good i want to get a little piece with the pineapple citrusy and sweet Oh my gosh, there's so many different sweet flavors coming out of that dish. We got the sweetest from the scallops, the lobster, the octopus. So you got that sweet, citrusy, juicy awesomeness coming from the bottom, from that pineapple, getting into your seafood. Giving it so much more dimension. And as always, toasty, stretchy cheese on top is always good. And two types of fried shrimp, look at this. Giant fried shrimp. Sweet shrimp, crunchy breading. I don't know what kind of spice they use on the breading. Well, that's delicious. I'm more excited about this though. Look at that. Fried shrimp with bacon wrapped around there. <laughs> that means a delightfully delicate sweet shrimp wrapped around fatty bacon. What's not to love about this? Let's try this stuffed lobster. Oh my good lord. All this awesome seafood stuffed into the lobster. It's all cooked in this delicious red sauce that's a little sweet. Extremely savory. And so amazingly rich. Mmm. That whole thing, especially the scallops, I think it just melts in your mouth. The sauce is so good because it just enriches the seafood ingredients without overpowering it. So you can still taste the gentle sweetness of the seafood, but with just that nice hint of spice and smokiness. This is my favorite one so far. Fried snapper. Look at all that gentle, juicy meat below that crispy outer shell. That's gonna be good. This is cooked perfectly. Splash some lemon juice on top of that. That's all you really need. Actually, add some of their spicy salsa. Oh, it's just a perfect balance of crunchiness and tenderness. I mean, listen to this. So amazingly crunchy on the outside. Those tender, flaky fish inside. And when this thing is fried well, break yourself off some fish chips. Fried shrimp on the half shell. Wow. <laughs> you gotta dig into the head. For some reason, the sauce just amplifies the shrimpy flavor and enhances that great umami of the shrimp head. This tastes way shrimpier, and I'm saying this in the best way possible, because really, like shrimp usually you eat it, you eat it it's a little sweet. That's about it, but that great flavor of the shrimp, which is in the head, the innards, the brain, the guts, all that great miso. I don't know if it's the sauce they added while cooking the shrimp. You can definitely taste so much of that great flavor in each single bite. This is absolutely phenomenal. Mm, this sauce, oh my goodness, this is sensational. Mm. The sauce, it's got a gentle sweetness to it and so much. And the richness of all that great seafood. Oh, this is so perfect. With this, we're pretty much to dip anything else in. I think get, get some of that fish, dump it in here as well. Take the fries, forget the ketchup. Dip it in this sauce. Oh. That's masterful. The octopus, they deep fry first, then put it in that great sauce to stir fry with. And this thing, I think, is covered in garlic and onions. Mmm. 
at this point, the octopus is slightly tough, but that sauce with all that rich, smoky garlic, I would just smother that sauce all over rice and eat it like that. In fact, I think I will. And let a single drop of the sauce go to waste. I mean, this will be good to take home too. And just use the sauce to pretty much stir fry anything else you want or dip anything else you want to eat in it. This is the little bitty stir fry shrimp. Mmm. I'm just crunching off the whole body here. This place does shrimp so amazingly well. It's their secret sauce, oh my goodness. The more you eat it, the more you're addicted. It's a slow heat. When you first take a bite, oh, it's really good. But it's not that spicy. Then it just hits you and it lingers on the back of your tongue. It's not just like a simple burn, it's a delicious burn. And this thing is some sort of concoction with shrimp and octopus. And beans. It's like a seafood stew. Giant chunks of lobster with, again, other seafoods cooked in. Mm. That's just so sweet. I feel like this whole tray, and there's so many different combinations you can achieve with the ingredients. If you think it's too spicy, you got the guacamole to cool you down. If you think the seasoning is a little heavy-handed for you, there's some of the other dishes. There's also lighter dishes here. There's heavier dishes here. There's fried, there's boiled, there's stir fried. There's just so much variety here and all the different combinations you can do with the seafood, with the rice, with the bread, with the fish. Your taste buds are never gonna get bored. Also, big shout out to the chef. Oh my goodness, I've never seen anything like this in my life and I worked in plenty of kitchens. You can see here, this guy was running, I think about 10 pans, two or three items in the fryer, a couple items on the grill. He was running all of that at the same time and out comes this ultimate seafood feast fit for, I don't know, Aquaman, Poseidon, you name it, people who love seafood, they're gonna love this. Favorite thing, definitely the shrimp here with the head on there. That umami flavor from the shrimp, it's just so amazingly rich and delicious. Fish is awesome, love that. Pineapple is great. I love the sauces. Take the sauces home. I'm not wasting a single drop of this. All right, I'm gonna try to eat as much as we can. See you in a bit. Without the seafood, um, something that I just kind of overlooked is the guacamole, which is amazing. A little guacamole on a tostada with some spicy shrimp. Mm. I don't think I've ever had like a full-on Mexican seafood feast before. This is definitely an experience. One that I would recommend to anybody. Also, forgot about the Dungeness crab. Whatever this sauce is, it just goes so well with seafood. It doesn't overshadow how sweet the seafood is. Oh, something else I keep missing. This is like an archaeological find where you just uncover things left and right. I forgot about the steak and the chicken. I didn't forget about the chicken. I'm not gonna forget about the steak. Oh! No, this steak is awesome. Hmm, that's so fatty and juicy. I'm like a steak seafood sandwich. Spicy, smoky, creamy, fatty. Beef seafood guacamole sandwich on toasted garlic bread. If they sold this on a menu, I'll buy this. This is so good. One correction, the shrimp I was ra raving about is actually lingostino. That's why the flavor is so intense. Definitely the best thing on this entire shrimp. So good. So all that food, we finished everything except for these few containers here. We dropped this off for family in the city. After a savory meal, you gotta get some dessert. Margie's Candy, this place opened in 1921. And this is a Chicago landmark. It used to have the largest Sunday in the world. Now it just has a really ridiculously big Sunday. Got a little ice cream float. It comes with a wafer. So this is a candy ice cream shop. 
And they give you a lot of ice cream in this float. Oh, this vanilla ice cream is awesome. Also, got the largest ice cream sundae in the world. It's not. They actually have one here. That's 25 scoops. That's just what this is called. Six scoops. Mm. Oh, that hot fudge is so good. Ooh, dark chocolate. But just being here, it's such a vintage, cool little dessert shop. Eating these classic flavors. That's why I got a root beer float. This is just a nostalgia inducing place. Remember when my dad had the restaurant? Favorite thing to do is just soft serve and then going over to the sewing machine. We're making a float like every single meal. Good morning. Obviously, yesterday the seafood. Really the only meal I needed for that day. I woke up starving, so I'm here bright and early at the Chicago French Market. And there's a sandwich I haven't had in such a long time that it's supposed to be right here. Oh my goodness, this place smells good. As soon as you walk in, I smell tomatoes, I smell basil. There's so much stuff being cooked right now and the aroma is just intoxicating. There's dim sums, Korean foods, Chinese food, Filipino food. This is a really nice market. Here it is. The best sandwich I've ever had in my life is now in Chicago. Got two sandwiches, freshly made. They smell amazing. The sandwich shop, um, I'll put a link to the old video about the sandwich shop down below. My favorite place to eat in all of Florence. There's always a line out the door. It's freshly baked focaccia bread. And when you're waiting for your sandwich, they give you samples of the bread while you're in line. The meat is cut right in front of you. Fresh veggies, and it's ginormous. This one's a tiny bit smaller. This looks like beautifully made fresh bread. Slices of supersata inside, which is a dry Italian sausage, some arugula, I think some chili sauce. Oh, this bread feels so toasty fresh. Not exactly like the one I had in Florence, but still so amazingly delicious in its own way. Oh my, there's so many flavors hitting me. Like even about 10 seconds after that bite went down the hatch. First, you get that crunchy, toasty bread. Mm. The bread crunchy on the outside, so soft and pillowy. This is not exactly like the sandwich I got in Florence, but this is extremely delicious in its own way. First of all, the bread is not focaccia. It's a shia shiata, which is more dense and chewy. This thing is so toasty on the outside, soft inside. Ricotta cheese, you get a crunch from the bread, a crunch from the arugula. The spicy soposada then just start attacking your tongue, lighting it on fire. When you're tasting the spice, you also get the sweetness from the honey and then the gentle coolness from the ricotta cheese. If you're in Chicago or around here, do yourselves a favor and come try the sandwich. And for me, luckily I got two. The other one is a truffle prosciutto. Same type of bread with the arugula mozzarella cheese, a truffle spread on the bottom and thinly sliced prosciutto on top. Hmm. A tear inducing sandwich. You get that great truffle flavor, also a balsamic glaze. Brings a bit of rich vinegary flavor that just makes the porky fatty prosciutto taste even better. Mm. The sandwich much more mild, a bit richer, definitely cheesier and meatier. That's gonna leave you just as happy as the first. I prefer the spicy one more, just because I like spicy, but you can't go wrong with any of these sandwiches. This is definitely a taste that brought me back to Florence. Mm. Let's try out a few more places. Look at this, this is so cool. This market, it's not a cheap market. This kind of reminds me of the Chelsea market in New York with better food, but get homemade jewelry, there's this little purses. Oh, it's a lobster roll place. Top 25 in America by BuzzFeed. All right, let's see if BuzzFeed knows what they're talking about. I'm really excited about this. So they have a happy lobster roll and an angry lobster roll. 
course, gotta get the angry lobster roll. And a king crab bisque. This is a creamy looking king crab bisque. Whoa. This thing's not like any bisque I've ever had in my life. Wow, this is so different and so good. Usually, any type of lobster or king crab bisque, it's creamy, it's smoky, a little sweet. This thing, it's citrusy with just a load of herbs and flavors. It's smoky, it's extremely aromatic. This is, again, unlike any bisque I've ever had, but this is the best one I've ever had. This is so amazing. All right. Time to check out this angry lobster. Oh, this is interesting. It looks like a burger bun it's on. Oh, tons of chilies, pickle, carrots, over giant chunks of lobster. Freaking amazing. This is not your traditional lobster roll. I mean, what's similar is a giant chunks of absolutely delicate, like sweet lobster. What's different is the bun they used. Obviously toasted with butter. I think there's some mayo in here, but other than that, when you take a bite, you're not getting that mild sweet taste. You usually get with a typical lobster roll, you're getting some heat, you're getting some crunch, and a whole lot of flavor. If you're looking for a lobster roll that's not like a traditional lobster roll, there's a lobster roll with an attitude, yeah. This is the one. BuzzFeed Food Network, not wrong on this one. This is a great place. Oh, you gotta get the bisque. Dunk it in the bisque. You knew that was coming, right? Mm. So awesome. Um, I think I'm gonna try one more push. Taste of the Philippines. Oh yeah, this place looks really, really good. There's ube waffles, heck yeah. I'll take a bistec. Yeah, sounds good. With garlic rice? Do you have garlic rice with that? Perfect. And can we get a ube waffle, please? And a uh, cantaloupe juice, please. Cantaloupe juice. Thank you. Good value. This mistake, close to two pounds of food. Look at this. Tender chunks, juicy steak. I think they're using tri-tip, and look at it. It's just flickering it with my fork, and just falling apart like it's nothing. And the steak is a Filipino beef stew dish, and this thing is just covering all this delicious garlic rice. Mm. This is so awesome beyond words. This steak is so tender. It's deliciously seasoned, wonderfully garlicky. The science, I think, really, really necessary because the flavor sometimes is almost too much. So a bite of scallions kind of resets the taste buds a little bit. Mm. And as you chew the rich flavor of the beef breaks down, you also got some caramelized onions in there for a little bit of sweetness. And then you taste a bit of the vinegary flavor. That's such a prominent part of Filipino food's taste profile. And the beef, good amounts of fat as well. Just renders so nicely on your tongue. Also, check this out. Cantaloupe juice, but this one is different. Freshly sliced cantaloupes inside. Only thing, wish I had a bubble tea straw so I can suck all these strips of uh, cantaloupe up. Mm. That was refreshing and delicious. Also for dessert, ube waffles. Coconuts inside the syrup. Mm. This waffle, great flavor of the ube, perfectly toasted. The syrup is awesome with the thinly sliced coconuts. And there's actually so many other styles I want to try. There's a champion place that makes uh, crawfish champion, crawfish Chinese crepes. There's a Korean place that looks really good. The Japanese place that looks really good. It's called the French market, but there's so much more than that. As always, all the places I went to listed down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.